right, welcome back to Morning Live. I'll remind you, SMS lines are open. Double triple nine. You can actually send us your SMS. We'll be sampling them as we go on in the show. And of course, Mombasa Road is ranked Nairobi's deadliest road due to its indiscipline of motorists and impatience of pedestrians. This is according to the Kenya National Highways Authority. NTSA's recent accident report dated March 16th shows the highway leads with 11 deaths, followed by the Northern Bypass with six. Jogo, Kangundo and Outer Ring Roads have each recorded five fatalities since the year began. Wayakiwe follows with four deaths. Just last week, 14 people lost their lives at Kikopei. In studio to discuss this, further, I'm joined by Samuel Musumba, who is the manager in charge of road safety and strategies at TNTSA, now shedding more light on this. Bala Musumba, good morning. Good morning. Of course, we're seeing sporadic <coughs> different figures uh, from Mombasa Road, Kangundo, Jugo Road, and different highways across the country. But you see, the sampling, but we have so much going on around the country. Are you, are you happy? The last time you were here, it was catastrophic, actually. Are you happy with the progress so far? Because not happy the fact that now you're reporting deaths, but still, is there confidence in terms of just trying to bring this sanity back in our roads? I would say that um, overall, there is an improvement compared to if you look at the figures of uh, the, 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 the past years. Uh, such a time we'll be talking about very huge figures at the same time. Um, up to, I think up to last week, uh, when we had the, the, the last uh, accident at Kikopei, we registered 683 deaths nationally. Uh, if you compare that to, to the previous year, where we had about 640, 651, about the small increase, about 4 uh, percent around there. Mm -hmm. But um, if you look at the, the categories of the victims, then you'll be able to understand really what we are talking about here. That while we categorize the roads you've mentioned, Mombasa, Kangundo Road, the Jugo Roads in Nairobi as high-risk roads, but incidentally, the people who are dying on these roads are pedestrians. Uh, to date, actually, pedestrians are leading in, in out of the, 680, the, the, six, the 683, we're having uh, about uh, 250 pedestrians. And out of this, almost 50% is Nairobi. And it tells you a lot. You, 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 you unpackage this and you start realizing that um, there is now a problem with the pedestrians. Okay. Uh, while we are seeing motorists are a bit reckless and all that, but you can see where are these pedestrians being knocked from. Uh, one of the challenges we have with the pedestrians is that uh, they cross anywhere. Whereas there are a few provisions for where they're supposed to be crossing from. There are a few footbridges here and there. We're not saying that they're sufficient, yes. There are a few zebra crossing here and there. Mm. But where majority of our pedestrians cross from are away from these provided uh, fac facilities. Sure. And, and that's why uh, perhaps this number is going up. Also, majority of our pedestrians uh, who walk sometimes in the night mm -hmm. are not visible at all. And uh, some of those areas which are not very well lit, and these guys are just crossing, running through, and sometimes at night, they're not visible, you're not able to see them. That is how they're ending up uh, being knocked. Okay. I'll give a case of uh, Waiyakiwe, for example, where we have a majority of these pedestrians dying uh, around where this forested area, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just towards the bridge to Kangen. Just after, after Kino. After, just yeah. around there. Yeah. And these guys just, when you're driving there, they just fly from nowhere. The speed limit you put there is about 50 kilometers uh, per, okay. per hour. But it's so smooth. I know it's that so smooth. It's so yes. smooth for drivers <laughs> to actually just yes. yeah, flat out. Yes, yes, yes but, but they just cross so fast, uh, oblivious of, of, of these uh, uh, dangers. The same road, um, James Kishuru, Turironi, is now under construction. Okay. There's so much works going on. Mm -hmm. And particularly, the, most of the works are being done at night um, when there's less traffic. Sure. But what do you see? you driving there, even at a very slow speed, these guys even af avoid the areas designated for them to, yeah. to move yeah. through. Yeah. Even around those works. Some people even jump they, these barriers. They jump actually. the barriers yeah, and, yeah. and just get into that. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the wall, <laughs> the famous wall that we yeah. have on Yekiwe, yeah. they just jump onto yeah. that and yeah. cross yeah. through. We've seen that several end. times. Yes. Mm. So that perhaps sometimes explains why we're having these numbers really going up. And that's why I said, well, there's improvement motorists well, th there's, there's a semblance of reduction, okay. but pedestrians now are the worrying 
uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. Not to forget also there are also pedestrians we call jaywalkers who they are drunk okay. at night and they're crossing the same road. They don't care. In fact, you hoot at them, they'll be shouting at you. <laughs> you know, wow. and wow. Uh, majority wow. of the cases that we have picked mm -hmm. on, on some of these roads okay. are actually people who are knocked while jaywalking. Drunk <laughs> and walking is at night, you're not visible, and you're on the road. What will happen? Okay, <laughs> yeah. that is very unfortunate. Now, um, we've touched on carelessness from the pedestrians, but now coming to the side of drivers, sometimes the speed limit. You know, speed limit is, uh, is easier said than done or easier seen than executed. Um, when you say, for example, 50 on that bridge, um, it should be 50. And of course, it's a bridge where they've given an opportunity for even pedestrians to cross up. They can actually have the option. Yes, I, I understand it's kind of a different ball game, but they, have, they can cross responsibly here. Now, is it a two-way traffic where we're seeing speed limit, discipline, and of course now carelessness on the part of the pedestrians? Right now, as much as you're focusing on the drivers, there's a loophole with the pedestrians. Now, sensitizing these people, how, as, how, how will you guys as the NTSC now try and tell pedestrians, you know, you, you focus so much on motorists. You arrest motorists, left, right, center. But you know that pedestrians also. When you now lock down the numbers, what do you do now about this? Uh, with pedestrians, what we've done, um, and, and this has been the past, and also now what we are uh, planning to enhance now, uh, out of awareness, particularly in those areas that are heavily populated. Um, the, 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 if you're on this side, it is in Mombasa Road, then you're talking about all the way into Mukuru's and the other side. Because yeah. there are guys who eventually come mm -hmm. to cross this road, yeah. uh, either going to work or going to uh, their Vibaruas here and there. Uh, same to if you are on, on Kangemi Road, I mean on Oyaki Road, then you're talking about the Kangemis sure. and, and the other side as well. But that has not been sufficient enough because, again, getting these fellows, mobilizing them somewhere and then trying to, to, to educate them. Mm -hmm. But what we have been doing is that meeting them at the point of crossing. That's where we've been engaging them, at the point of crossing. Uh, if you walked on this road, you'd see, or drive on this road, you'd see that we have put some, uh, uh, some of our, our staff, uh, they call yeah, it marshals. Reflectors, actually. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So what we tell them is, once you stop the human traffic, talk to them first as the, the, the vehicle traffic is moving. Yeah, yeah. Talk to them, tell them something before they cross. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow, uh, there are few who listen. Yeah. But the majority will even tell you, hey, but I mean, I'm a bit of a tango, I'm a bit of a tango, I'm a bit of a I've been here, I've been crossing here. Yeah, sure. Uh, before even you are formed. <laughs> so what are you telling me? Personalities. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. They will tell them, someone just died a while ago. He will request to You know. Wow. I don't know. It's... They don't yeah, seem to have this it's, sense it's of crazy. It's crazy. it is risky, mm -hmm. it is dangerous to do this. Um, we even began a campaign of uh, uh, giving them reflective bands. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll tell uh, pedestrians, look, this is for you. Okay. Uh, you may require it at night, for example, you're walking. Okay. Uh, how do I put on that? I mean, I'm not going to be tagged. I'm not a dog to be tagged. Wow. <laughs> wow. So there the, the <laughs> must know? be a response somewhere. There must be a response okay. somewhere. Okay. Uh, we are doing the same to... Um, uh, Mombasa Road, mm -hmm. if you were at Airtel, mm -hmm. you'd see our marshals yeah. very actively involved and they would stop you and before you cross, they're able to engage you and mm -hmm. tell you, hey, mm -hmm. before you cross, sometimes just be able to look left, Absolutely. right, Absolutely. Um, and then mark where mm -hmm. crossings are. Every time, please use the, the few facilities that uh, uh, we have provided for you okay. to, to, to okay. cross. Okay. Um, but I know it's a tall order, mm -hmm. uh, but we really want to to, to, to have major campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, now we are calling for more partnership with uh, other stakeholders. Okay. You know, not necessarily government uh, agencies, mm -hmm. but even non-governmental agencies. Uh, we're happy that the church has come to us mm -hmm. uh, through the, 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 the umbrella body, the, call it the NCC, whatever, K. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are individual churches in these areas who have come up and said no. Uh, we have to do something. All right. Yeah. Now, Mombasa Road, uh, you understand, uh, I think from uh, from around, um, this, this from, in fact, just coming in from Panari, that stretch all along to maybe GM in Maradema Junction, we had barriers, metallic barriers to prevent pedestrians from crossing. But after six months, we had nothing. Like they were all gone. 
who's doing this? <laughs> who's doing all this? Because metallic barriers, I, th I believe you saw them, but right now, it's none. Guys are still crossing now. At that point, yes, it's regulated. Guys want to cross. But right now, nothing is there. Is it vandalism? Is it now change of decision? Is it, What is happening? Because you don't understand. And they keep on putting them there. Is it like I tell you guys trying to say, we put it, we chuck it. There's a problem over there. Um, 2016, we looked at this pedestrian issue and realized it was really becoming a bigger issue. Um, in that time, I think we had lost close to about uh, almost 400 uh, pedestrians. It was a big number. Was a big number. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the government formed uh, an interagency uh, committee to look at just pedestrian issues in Nairobi. And uh, in this interagency committee, we also pulled in the, the private sector. And one of the proposals was, yes, as much as we do sensitization and other enforcement and all that, but we need to uh, separate vehicle traffic uh, and, and human traffic, this mm. conflict. We need to separate it yeah. uh, completely. How do we do it? Put barriers. And uh, we approached uh, the, 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 the corporates. Mm -hmm. And it was a very good uh, initiative. In fact, we dubbed it Save a Thousand Lives. Yes, yeah, Falcon was there, sure. everybody else was there, and mm -hmm. all this. Now, what corporates will do is they will choose a given stretch of a road, put those barriers, and there was a waiver from the county government 100% waiver on advertisement. Wow. You put up the barrier, you can advertise on those barriers as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. Now, these are win win situations. Mm -hmm. uh, while the county may not get revenue from it, but you see, bigger picture. the bigger picture, yeah, you're contributing yeah. to the safety of these people mm -hmm. who are actually coming to the county to do their business sure. at the end sure. of the day. Sure. And corporates are also happy because they're saying, hey, like Safari Chrome was saying, we've just seen people being knocked at while getting to our, our, our premises, coming for business. Um, same to, um, uh, this is what, uh, KTN on this, mm -hmm. on this road, mm -hmm. um, Standard Media yeah, Group. Yeah, yeah. They're saying, yes, our staff, we're losing even our staff here, uh, Airtel and the rest. So they did put up very good uh, panels, and you saw the, the pedestrian fence, very good. Yeah. And put the adverts and all that. For some time, actually, the numbers went down. That, with a bit of enforcement, funneling these guys to the right direction, mm -hmm. there's a bit of that. But what happens? This guy started vandalizing, the, vandalizing this, uh, these panels. I don't know for what reasons. Uh, you put today there, the next day they cut a bit, slowly by slowly, the next day you come, they are not there. You ask the people who live on this road, they won't tell you, yeah, we saw some people here, see mm -hmm. you, Siku, and all mm -hmm. that. We put up um, a team, an enforcement team, too, and we made a few arrests. Okay. And where some of these panels were ending up, they were ending up somewhere, I think, in industry area, where these guys do, uh, uh, you know, know and, and, and all yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. We have made a few arrests. Okay. But you can see it has gone on and on and yeah. on. They vandalized today. They carry one, two, until yeah. the place just becomes that. Uh, no. Some of them even cross through those uh, those panels. You know, somebody squeezed himself. We have had people being knocked just <laughs> trying to squeeze through yeah, uh, yeah, those yeah, panels. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's a matter of behavior. Mm -hmm. um, y this is risky. This is an initiative that is trying to save a life. Then you go ahead and vandalize. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of behavior also. Absolutely. You know, now, yes. On, on the <coughs> bypass also, um, the flyover is just uh, 500 meters from you, but someone wants to squeeze in that metallic boundary to actually go to the highway, to make it fast on the other side. Now, safety of those flyovers, it's been a topic actually also, whereby now, if you pass that night, some people might just be waiting for you. Now, guys are trying to avoid those places at night. That's another angle also. Do you think uh, we need to now try also enforce some security in these flyovers? Because the mugglers, those guys who actually just rob you at gunpoint, rob you in any way, kind of forcefully rob you, they're always, always there. Now, hawkers also, they're always there. But now, there's fear of people now being kind of even murdered in those flyovers at night. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the problem. People fear those flyovers. Absolutely. I agree with you. In fact, um now is a bit better compared to a few years ago. Okay. Some of those areas, 
the Mudurwa ones. Yes, uh, you especially Mudurwa. Yes, yeah. around Jogo Road, mm -hmm. you could not go over. At night. And uh, even in the day, you know, when, when, when you, when these guys have a way of, of, of creating um, a snarl up on, uh -huh. the, on those bridges, uh -huh. the, those pickpockets, they, they, they'll, they'll come so many and pretend like, uh, you know, we are moving at a very slow yeah, uh, yeah, pace, yeah. Yeah. and they keep robbing people around sure, there. So sure. even the day it was, it was, was even risky. Mm -hmm. But um, right last week we were in in, in a security meeting, and uh, uh, the, the, the police have taken it up as well. Uh, the county government also has taken it up very seriously now. Some of these areas now you can cross comfortably. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't believe you can now go over the Muduro Bridge without <laughs> any issues. So uh, Now there are guys in, in, in uh, civilian clothes. Okay. They will arrest you. Okay. Uh, Jugoro, so right, right now, we are watching right. can confidently cross confidently Muduro cross. and other flyovers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the challenge will be at night sometimes. Okay. Uh, because again, we don't have a 24-hour surveillance okay, okay. of security. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're crossing there at 2 a.m. I don't know where you're coming from and <laughs> where mm -hmm. you, are, mm -hmm. you are going. Okay. But in the day, uh, I can assure you there is enough surveillance. Mm -hmm. There are people there in civilian. You will not notice them. Okay. They will arrest you. Okay. Uh, some of these pickpockets, now they are, it's, it's a gone case now. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Back to motorists. Very key um, people in terms of now this, the whole safety because without motorists, we could be having these other stories of pedestrians being killed. Now, um, let's talk about discipline. Are you, are you happy with the discipline so far? Especially, we're talking about, we, you know, you've been so much blaming peace vis. And it's coming out that private owners are actually very, very indisciplined out here. We've been blaming peace vis, oh, matatu, matatu. But as it is, the statistics actually show private owners, private vehicles, very rampant in actually making chaotic moves, chaotic overlaps, everything. What's your opinion on, from the observation? How can you actually rate these people? Yes, um, I'll agree with you that uh, private vehicles have become a nuisance. Very impatient. In fact, if you look at the statistics, uh, PSVs, and we were, we were analyzing uh, last year's statistics, PSVs went down yeah. in terms of contribution to mm -hmm. fatalities nationally. The private vehicles now uh, incidentally went up. Uh, there is a bad culture. I'll just say it's, it's, it's a behavior, just mm -hmm. bad behavior among mm -hmm. the private motorists who sometimes think always they have right of way. Sure. And then they're enjoying this thing of uh, enforcement is only targeting the, <laughs> the PSV. Mm -hmm. uh, PSV are the most, uh, you know, seen mm -hmm. <laughs> on, on the road. Yeah. So they're yeah. taking a bit of that. Mm -hmm. um, two also, uh, and you've seen the recent past, and mm -hmm. you people have been capturing this. Yeah. Some of the people who have been caught flouting some of these rules mm -hmm. are actually government vehicles. Uh, you saw a whole, <laughs> a whole uh, GK vehicle, though under under private numbers, okay. uh, belonging to the to in the DCI's office or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. on the wrong side, ending up knocking this lady who yeah, yeah, innocently yeah. she's on <laughs> she, she's on the right uh, direction, mm -hmm. but she's knocked, um, and many others. Mm -hmm. So th there is that that is coming up, uh, including now the the, 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 the individual-owned kind of vehicles, mm -hmm. where private vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, that also is to do with the other behavior. We are noticing there are fellows who um, have not been well trained okay. in terms of driving. Okay. You know, somebody just got hold of a, a vehicle somewhere for a few days and he's on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, novice drivers are also coming up, you know, you find yeah, majority of yeah. these guys mm -hmm. on the road. Mm -hmm. So this is compounding our problem. Okay. And um, one of the things now we are doing is uh, enforcement now will be, uh, is, is now also going towards these private vehicles. Okay. Okay. Uh, more than ever before now mm -hmm. we are going to do a lot of enforcement okay. on, on private vehicles. Right. And we'll be looking at your licenses. <coughs> Very keenly on your licenses. Boy, some people have been driving for more than 10 years without licenses. Uh, uh, this was now, you know <laughs> what, what, will, what will happen to them. Uh, okay. And don't forget, uh, uh, the, the instant fines are also coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, instant fines will be tied to so many other things. Okay. Uh, the point system will be there. Right. So you're not going to get away with it. Yes, sorry, you're there. Of course, you're coming back. And I'm aware some people have been driving for more than 10 years without driving licenses. So when you come back, you want to focus on our highways. Now, Sashangwan has been there for quite some time. You know what happened. And 
You know, in Africa, sometimes there's angle of spiritual disturbance that actually comes with Sichanguan. So, when a Samuel Musumba, as far as, as much as it's from NTSA, it'd be now touching base on that. What is wrong at the black spots? Are we not actually just manning them to make sure we reduce such accidents? All that after a short break. Right, welcome back to Morning Live. Right now, as I mentioned before you took the break, you want to focus on our main highways, but you can still continue this conversation on social media. On Twitter, you can find us at Switch TV Kenya, and Facebook, the same thing, Switch TV Kenya, Instagram, Switch TV KE. And of course, you'll be sampling your views as we discuss all these SMS lines, always open, double two triple nine. Be part of the show. You'll be sampling your views with one of Musumba in studio. So let's now focus on the highways, because now when you mentioned um, the other day Kikopei we had a problem and there's sometimes now mechanical angle of our cars we really ignore this angle whereby we feel like ah I have nice brakes sometimes you're doing this long distance trip you're traveling for a long distance but you feel like ah, I have my car my car is in good condition no service no actually you see these movable parts nothing then boom yes um while we blame drivers and, and, and other road users for some of these um, happenings on our roads. But um, like you rightly put it, we sometimes ignore the mechanical condition of the vehicle. Yes. Um, and that's why when we go for defensive driving uh, courses, you're taken through a whole um, module on that. Yeah. Understand your car. Let the car speak to you. Feel your car before you start driving. It's very easy to drive anyway. Anybody can drive sure, sure. You, as long as you're able to handle mm -hmm. the steering wheel. But you listen to your car and, and all mm -hmm. that. Um, some of the accidents that we are seeing on our roads really beg a lot of questions. What happened to Kikopei? Uh, investigation is still going on. But you realize this truck just lost control and from one direction went hitting all the other vehicles which were on the right direction. Wow. Wow. Um, you may think of your the, the driver, maybe he was this and that. Uh, although he ran away, they, they, they're still pursuing him. Hope he'll, he'll, he'll be able oh, to be a resident oh, 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 and tell us away. the story, you know. Um, but you also want to think about this vehicle. Yeah. And I will tell you this, that uh, the kind of lubricants uh, that majority of motorists are using mm -hmm. are also in question. Uh, a brake failure is not, uh, is not a very natural thing to happen. It is a mechanical thing, a process, and it's because of one, two other conditions that lead to that. Uh, and lubricants now come in here. The type of lubricant you're using could just be the cause of your brake failure. Sure. And now for that case, which is a heavy vehicle, uh, you know, you put in the wrong lubricants, uh, you, you step on the braking paddles, uh, it's just not holding. It gets hotter, the system gets hotter and hotter. With this weight behind you, what will happen? Of course, panic will come in. Mm -hmm. You're trying to control this thing, it's not moving. So eventually you'll end up um, in whichever direction that uh, it will take you to. Mm -hmm. The kind of fuel is also being used. Uh, majority of us Kenyans want to go for cheap, cheap lubricants, yeah, cheap yeah. fuels and yeah. all that. Yeah. We've seen people fueling along the road. Guys just come from somewhere with like a small uh, jerry can of, of fuel. Yeah. You even don't know where it's coming from. And sometimes that fuel even smells paraffin. Wow. And you're putting in your in your in car. car. Uh, sometimes maybe you've stalled somewhere mm -hmm. and you just order for this guy. You send up a border guy to, and he runs in some village somewhere. He brings you this <laughs> oil. You even don't know the source of this oil. Yeah. These oils will spoil your engine. Mm -hmm. These lubricants are going to spoil the system, okay. and eventually you are going to cause an accident on these roads. Okay. And so, so this, this is an awareness we are trying to also mm -hmm. bring up to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Please use the right fuels, okay. the right lubricants. Um, just last week we were meeting with a, 
the oil uh, and, and, and gas uh, you know, dealers and, and transporters. And they're also expressing the same concern. Concern that fake yeah. products are, are all over the market. Are all over the market. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans are now going there. Cheaper options. Cheaper options. Okay. Mushrooming petrol stations all over the place. You wake up today, this thing was not there. Tomorrow there's like yeah, a small yeah, petrol yeah, station yeah. somewhere. Yeah, a fellow is selling some fuels there. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, what, where did this all come yeah, from? Yeah. So this is something that uh, Kenyan motorists should be aware of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please use the right lubricant, okay. the right fuels, mm -hmm. because your system once gets uh, spoiled, okay. you're bound to cause... Uh, Absolutely. Yes. Now, let's talk about our black spots. Like I'm saying our black spots because we know them, but accidents keep on happening at the, at the same same place over and over again. Sometimes also um, with with us Africans, we will tag such Nguan as a very spiritual place where by now accidents keep on happening over there time and time again you see once we now get kind of a very uh, emotional with this thing it, it becomes uh, mind-boggling because now the same same black spots where in fact it's been marked black spots accidents keep on happening right there so as the NTSC maybe is it is it is it high time we need now to kind of review on how people operate on such tricky highways tricky maybe um kind of a uh, slippery roads how are we maybe trying to now reduce these deaths? Because now a driver, of course, notification, black spot, slow down. But this guy is still on flat out. Mm -hmm. Agree. Uh, and I want to, 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 uh, to tell the viewers that uh, let's move away from this word black spot. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> it really gives a very wrong connotation <laughs> that anything black mm -hmm. Is yeah, evil, is evil and, and, <laughs> and that's why people are saying they are spirit, they are spirits at yeah, yeah. so it is evil, it's a yeah. black spot. People uh, gonna pray over that. And, 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 and the voice and yeah. all that. Yeah. Uh, but it's not black spots. Uh, actually, the right word is uh, these are high collision locations. Mm -hmm. where, yeah, where yes, collisions happen. They are high collisions. Uh, that way, then you can be able to unpackage the causes and be able to address that. What we have done. We have done serious road audits. Even as we speak right now, there's a team on the corridor now picking out the smaller details so that they are rectified. Last year, you remember, we even launched uh, a report on, 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 on a major audit mm -hmm. that was done on, on the corridor, and we mapped out some of these areas. In fact, what people know as, uh, as, as perennial uh, high collision areas, mm -hmm. I don't want to call them black spots anymore. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> These yeah, high pollution areas. areas. Um, a number other 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 areas also came up. Mm -hmm. Now, why an area would be called a high collision area? There could be engineering, road engineering issues mm -hmm. around that area. Uh, signage could be missing. Okay. Um, maybe the way the road was done, one or two things could just be missing. Okay. And so when we bring out this report, one of the things that we want to achieve is. Yes, then the engineers would look at the road again mm. and redo it according to the recommendations we have made. Okay. And that will be taken care of by the road agencies, mm -hmm. Kenha and Kuras, sure. who are now actually now working on some of these things. Mm -hmm. But also, it is an information to the motorists mm -hmm. that, hey, look here, when you approach this area, there's no clear signage. This area, the road is a bit bumpy. The road is a bit slippery. Mm -hmm. So just beware of that. But, um, and we made this, this report very public. It okay. is in our website and all that. We're even telling the, the motorists, please download this because again, this report is, uh, I think th there's now conversion into uh, what, what is a, a GPR kind of, 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 uh, of system, which you can access very easily even okay. on your phone. Mm -hmm. It will be alerting you on some of these things. So as you approach that area, you know, do this and that. Mm -hmm. But what do they do? They don't care. Uh, they approach such a one, same speed, <laughs> same everything, wow. oblivious of some of the measures, some of the things that we have mentioned here. Yes, yes. You, you go to such a one right now. Mm -hmm. After what happened the other year, there's so much that is now happening now. Mm -hmm. We are dueling that road. Mm -hmm. And other than dueling that road, so that we ease traffic, because it was just uh, the, the, the traffic then was, there was a lot of collision because of you want to overtake, the other traffic is coming from the other yeah, side. Yeah. But now we are separating these two. Mm -hmm. Other than that, 
there are now areas where you, in, 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 in case of a uh, brake failure, in case of uh, uh, maybe almost a head-on collision, there are, there, there are rescue areas that you can push your car to. Okay. If you on that road, you'll see some, in fact, some people are asking, why are you putting these rough surface areas mm -hmm. uh, besides the road and mm -hmm. all that? These ones are meant to help you uh, maneuver, actually, from now on coming traffic. From the oncoming yeah. traffic mm -hmm. and move. You'll be safe okay. on those areas. Okay. I hope they'll use uh, the, these facilities. All right. Okay, let's <laughs> but hope so. Uh, but there's let's nothing so. devilish mm -hmm. around that area. Mm -hmm. It's just... Uh, okay. uh, you know, a road no, 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 issue. Neither a black spot, eh? <laughs> neither a black yeah, spot. High collision yeah. area. Yes, a high collision area. <laughs> I'm trying to sugarcoat it. Eh? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Bwana Samuel, for coming. Thank you. And of course, see you soon. And let's hope now Sunny will come back to our roads. Mm -hmm. Now, for the pedestrians out here who are kind of putting their lives in danger, please, please, flyovers, these people, um, I made the flyovers for you to be safe and just try and use them because at the end of the day, don't be part of the statistic. So just use your common sense, situational awareness, and be safe. You're taking a short break now. When you come back, you want to